This is the Triple Play Fantasy Basketball Show. And boy, do we have a big one here this week uh, with Christmas around the corner. If this is your first time tuning in, uh, what myself, Coach James Lewis, uh, my co host, Jacob Dunn, ain't at Ain't Done Yet, trying to prepare you for the upcoming NBA Fantasy Week. Uh, we, got, we go back and forth, we talk about who's hot. The under rostered player free agents that you need to pick up, uh, waiver wire selects, uh, safe pickups, people think about dropping, um, as well as we look at the upcoming schedule, games played. We shout out a uh, player performance of the week. Uh, we also talk about things in the league. We have officially reached week 10 and tis the season to be on alert as complete chaos has ensued in the NBA due to COVID and COVID protocols. Now, you could either look at this as a watered-down product with the likes of Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Anthony Edwards, the entire Bulls roster, <laughs> or see it as an opportunity for young players like Jonathan Kuminga, who dropped 26 in Saturday's contest, mm -hmm. uh, or veterans like Isaiah Thomas dropping 19 in his Laker debut, or Kimba Walker getting uh, some playing time for the first time in 11 games with 29 points against Boston. So they're trying to prove that they still have a lot in the tank, and we got something in the tank too. Jacob, with the NBA's biggest blockbuster matchup day approaching on Christmas and all that's going on, what are some of your takeaways? It's complete madness out here with all these studs missing games due to COVID protocols. But the greatest present of all would be getting Giannis and James Harden back on Christmas Day. So let's make it happen, NBA. Man, COVID sucks. I had COVID oh, yeah. and it's it's awful. And um, I know mm -hmm. some of these are pro athletes. They a lot of them can can handle it just fine. Um, but it's it's still a, a horrible thing. And we yeah. remind everybody, please be safe. Wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Still wear mm -hmm. a mask. We're still in this pandemic full fledged. Uh, before we go with our takeaways of top free agents uh, based on rostered people on the Yahoo leagues. Uh, I want you to take a look at the schedule. It's a very, very short week. Um, there are uh, two teams that play four games. That's the Thunder and the Magic. So you really want to highlight those two teams as far as pickups are concerned. We're actually going to start there. Um, and then also look at the teams that play two. All the rest mm -hmm. of the league plays three games. Uh, but the Hornets, the Cavs, the T-Wolves, and the Bla Blazers are at a disadvantage with two. And, you know, there's only three games in your week. Uh, one game could really uh, pivot you to a, a dub in this uh, shortcoming week. So I think we're going to start with our top free agent pickups and waiver pickups uh, with uh, maybe a team that's in here. And I'm going to let Jacob lead the way on that. All right, guys, we're going to start it off with Chuma Okiki. Do you love me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> According to NBA Jam rules, the 23-year-old is on fire, averaging 13.7 nice. points, 6.7 rebounds, three steals, three threes, and 1.3 blocks over his past three games. All right. He's also been averaging 35-plus minutes a game during that span and needs to be rostered and started as long as Moritz Wagner – Terrence Ross, Mo Bamba, and Wendell Carter remain out. So take advantage of Okiki. Absolutely. And we saw what he did in his last game, dropping 18, 10 oh, rebounds, yeah. four assists, six, six steals, people. Woo, I can't make that one. up. Um, and he seems like he has some chemistry with Robin Lopez is somebody that you could pick up this week. He had a, you know, he's producing with points, rebounds, and assists yeah. in a role next to a it seems like a good fit. Uh, with Okiki. Uh, another guy that you could slide in your rotation uh, based on, you know, everyone in the world out in Orlando, that's Gary Harris. Yeah. Uh, Gary Harris is 10% roster, need a down tick of 6% with, uh, with, a, with a bad game last week. But for the most part, he's been producing offensively um, against Miami. Uh, he had 20 points, uh, five assists, two steals. I mean, and, and if you get four games of that, that's pretty mm -hmm. chills. Like, that's... Mm -hmm. That's 80 points. Uh, yep. And again, he doesn't have anybody in the backcourt uh, to face against. So uh, give me Gary Harris. Uh, give me Okiki. And then and Robin Lopez as well. Uh, yeah. If you're if you're looking for uh, some streamers this week. And th this week is all about the streamer play. I'm going to send it to Jacob for our next pick. Somebody that we've had here before. Yes. Uh, people have dropped, but he's having a resurgence. Yes, Dwayne Dedman. 
And my sorry dad joke when I said he's back from the dead, man. He's I back. Mean, I mean, <laughs> he's back, guys. We told you to pick up Deadman immediately following the BAM injury news a few weeks back. And he's been nothing but consistent, averaging near a double-double over his last nine starts, along with near triple-one stats. All right, that's a block steal and a three. He was dropped in a lot of leagues when he went on a two-game cold streak, but has turned it on over his past four games, averaging 13.3 points, 9.3 rebounds, one steal, and one and a half threes, while shooting over 62% from the field. All right, and Bam isn't expected back until mid to late January, which means Deadman needs to be rostered in all points and nine cat leagues while he's the starter in Miami. Yeah, and he's scooping up rebounds. I mean, that That's fourteen right. rebound line and that twenty and twelve is is amazing. Now we had just mentioned Robin Lopez. I just wanted to pull up his stats real quick on his last two games against yeah. Brooklyn. Just yesterday, Saturday night, he had twenty points, ten rebounds, four assists, and a block. And the game prior to that against Miami, against Dwayne Dedman, he had 18 points, seven rebounds, three mm -hmm. assists. So he's right now that's like a must roster for the week. Got to get uh, Robin Lopez, who currently right now is only 9% rostered. And that was all this last week. Yeah. Now, a teammate uh, over there in South Beach, uh, mm -hmm. a guy that we ta told you to pick up in the past. And uh, the guy's is just a flamethrower. He's a scorer. Yet yeah. uh, Tyler Hero's day to day and he'll probably be back and. That might eat a little bit of his production, but uh, with with one of the Martin brothers out, one of the Morris brothers out, Oladipo, bam, for the foreseeable future. And Jimmy Butler is still on the shelf. Uh, Gabe Vincent is a must-own. Uh, yep. He's 15% rostered. 13% uh, of people are getting hit. He averaged 18 points this last week, three rebounds, five assists, 50% shooting, 3.3 from a three, and 1.3 steals. So that's filling up each in every category on the list and two spectacular games. He went for uh 27, two, four assists, four threes, two stocks against Orlando on the 17th. And then on the 15th, he had 26 points, two rebounds, three assists, seven three pointers made when shooters shoot, you gotta scoop them. <laughs> so my guy this week uh, to scoop up is Gabe Vincent and to piggyback on that seven three pointers made. My number one pickup for the week, because I think that this one is a little bit sustainable uh, mm -hmm. until PG-13 returns. And that is Luke Kennard, who's finally gained some confidence um, playing on his high low. It's, it's, it's been shaky. We saw it last year in the playoffs. It's just, his confidence is off the cliff. And right now yeah. he is hooping. He's 41 percent roster. You can find him um, in leagues, but 18 percent of people have gotten it. And in the last two weeks, which is a good sample size, he's averaged 18 points, five rebounds, three assists, mm. so filling it up all across the board. And then 47% from the field, which I was talking about, you can see his confidence gain. And that's on 13 shots a game, people. Yep. 4.33. So much like Garrison Matthews, this guy is just lighting it up downtown. Uh, right. uh, last night uh, against OKC, he had 27 points, seven rebounds, three assists, and seven three-pointers made so the seven three-pointers made brothers and Gabe Vincent and Luke Kennard are uh, two of my guys that I would like you to pick up Gabe and Gabe Vincent is my favorite streamer on this on this day on Sunday all right for points and for steals and assists I mean he he's looking at a fantastic matchup today and Luke Kennard you said he had a game last Friday he played 39 minutes so until mm -hmm. The Clippers are at full strength. He needs to be rostered everywhere and started with confidence. All right. And Terrence Mann is shortly, you know, is close behind him. But Luke Kennard is definitely the number one ad in LAC. Yeah. And uh, Terrence Mann having that what, 39 point performance in the playoffs, a younger player. Right. People want to click uh, to get him. But Luke Kennard is the safer pick yes. for me. And he's somebody that I've used all three of my pickups this week because of all the madness going on. But I'm waiting till midnight, uh, a Sunday night, to use my first pickup for next week to get Luke Kennard. Um, speaking of some safety guys, uh, I'm going to send this to Jacob because this is somebody that he's told you to pick up in the past. Yeah. What's funny is that Medu is one of my favorite streamers to get you guys some steals today and some boards. All right. He's been lighting it up with the boards. Like you see right there, he had 18 points, 11 boards, two threes, one steal, and one block. All right. And when and with Terrence Davis out in the safety protocols right now, you know, Medu is getting a lot of minutes and he has proven 
that he can get you those triple one stats, all right? That block, steal, and three, all right? And he's starting. He he started last Friday, all right? So he's starting as long as Terrence Davis is out. Uh, so, you know, he is someone who, like we said, is safe and also can provide you those rare stats that you need, all right? So pick up pick up Medu because he is available in over 90% of Yahoo leagues right now. Yeah, and he's been... Uh, productive, uh, especially in the rebound department since uh, Rashawn Holmes has been on the shelf. And yeah. Ma- Marvin Bagley just can't uh, catch a break, but he has been playing well when he actually plays. But, I mean, if you've been picking him up, you you already know that the frustration that has, has come with Marvin Bagley the third. But uh, back on our safety belt picks, I uh, told you to get Herb Jones mm-hmm. – uh, last week, he might have the you know the longest arms on the perimeter defense <laughs> that I've seen. I mean, he just yeah. he be, he blocks three pointers, which is yeah. just a rarity uh, to see. But like a safety guy, because he's playing a lot, because they can't keep him off the floor. Herb Jones is on, per, uh, rostered in twenty percent of leagues, and over the last two weeks was a good sample side: ten points, four rebounds, two assists, uh, over fifty percent from the field. Giving you a steal, giving you a couple blocks uh, against Milwaukee. Had 17 points, nine rebounds, four assists, and two stocks. So uh, put uh, the safety helmet on for Mm -hmm. my guy, Herb Jones. Now, the last week, maybe of uh, two other safety guys, and this is uh, two people in the Memphis backcourt, one being Tyus Jones, who I've had for now a month now. the last two weeks, he's averaged 12 points, four rebounds, five assists, 46% from the field. His three-pointers have increased uh, to 1.6, which is an eye-opening, but it's uh, an uptick for him in his career, 1.1 steals. He's always producing that margin. Uh, John Moran is coming back soon, though, and we've seen Tyus Jones play heavy minutes without John on the court, and then he goes to a limited back well you know a serviceable backup role when jaw does play uh and then DeAnthony melton i don't know how he gets so many defensive stats it is insane <laughs> uh he's 49 percent rostered and you know six percent of us have, have cut him because he had def- he had a two he had a game with only two points but mm-hmm. even with that uh he was averaging 12 points three rebounds three assists 50 percent from the field 2.3 blocks one 2.3 steals rather one block and then against sacramento on the 17th of December, he had 19 points, three rebounds, three assists, five stocks, I and mean, I think four of them were steals. So uh, shout out uh, DeAnthony Melton and Ty Jones for maybe the last week, uh, depending on when Chalk comes back. Yes, and I would not prematurely cut Tyus Jones just in case there yep. is an unfortunate setback with mm. Jaw, or maybe Jaw needs a little bit more time. You know, Tyus Jones, but. Tyus Jones managers need to have a contingency plan in place once Jaw does come back. But until then, keep Tyus Jones and keep raking in those dimes. And uh, before we move on to our player of the week, someone that's taken the league by storm, um, we do have to go back to the fact that COVID sucks. Oof. Uh, and that's kind of in our injury category. And uh, we haven't had seen the entire spreadsheet of this before in the past. Yeah. Um, but we just kind of have to roll through and, and just take a quick look at exactly what the NBA uh, is in store for right now. And here we are. Uh, we're uh-huh. going to fly through it. And like we said, there there's people that you, you're having to go through your uh, your Google machine to kind of check out who are some of these players playing <laughs> 40 minutes. I mean, the, yeah. the, the New Jersey Net, – I mean, the New Jersey – the Brooklyn Nets are throwing out three rookies and, mm-hmm. and other players that we, you know, never heard of. You can see the Hawks are in kind of good standing. We knew about Hunter and Bogdanovich. The Celtics um, have a lot of their, I guess, role players out. So that means heavy minutes for their starters. That's good news. And here we are, the Nets. Um, here, David Duke Jr. had 14 rebounds his last performance. He's now day-to-day. Um, and you see the entire roster here. Oof. Like, I mean, how unlucky can you get KD, Harden? Ugly. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, Joe Harris. We know he's out for the year. Bruce Brown. Right. So, you know, we're wishing the best for the Nets to, to pull through that. But we've seen opportunities in players like Kessler Edwards and Cam Thomas that have been yep. eating a little bit. Uh, yep. Here goes the Bulls, uh, in, including their entire roster. <laughs> <laughs> Levine, Io, who was just playing off the chain. Shout out, yeah. um, Io DeSumo's 
really got eyes on on for everybody in the league. Cavs and Mobley. Yeah, go ahead. Good news though for for the Bulls, they get Demar Derozan back today. So get him in your lineup ASAP. You heard it first here. Uh, Demar Derozan is back, and I know yep. those fantasy owners who have uh, been eaten this year because he was uh, underdrafted uh, based yep. on they thought, hey, you're in a crowded uh, Bulls uh, backcourt, and maybe he's not going to see the same success. But he's he's reaching career highs all yep. around across the board. Um, Evan Mobley, uh, hip questionable, but I think he's in COVID protocols as well. Mm. So I, I have him on my team and, uh, that's just an unfortunate thing, but looks like the rest of the Cavaliers are getting back into the motion. Uh, we see a uh, we'll hopefully see him on Christmas day. Uh, but yeah. Dallas is, is steering clear a little bit. The Nuggets, uh, as you know, they've been very unlucky with actual injuries, not as much, uh, mm-hmm. COVID, but, uh, you know. Hope we're right. still looking at the return of, of Jamal Murray, but Bones Highland's been doing well. He's yep. one of your favorite streamers. Bones Highland and Facundo Campazzo, great, great streams. Uh, the Warriors, that's a lot of people on their list, uh, whether that's yep. COVID protocols or injuries. Uh, they rested uh, Steph Curry, and we saw uh, Jonathan Kaminga have 26. Oh, so. man. Hashtag free Kaminga, man. The 19 year old <laughs> showed us what he can do given the minutes. My gosh. Free that I, man. I, I I'm proponent on I want to see them package those young players yes. for another player and go all in on this year since it seems wide open. Why not send the wise man Kuminga yes. to the Pacers and uh you get Sabonis or Miles Turner even. Like obviously you want Sabonis, but I would I mean I selfishly want to see that happen. Kaminga could be a league winner if he gets shipped to a rebuilding team like the Pacers. I mean his per 36 is off the charts, and we just saw what he did in 34 in 34 minutes against the Raptors. So I am all for that trade. Uh, but for now, keep him on your watch list. But if he if he does get traded, pounce. Pounce on Jonathan, Jonathan Kaminga. Absolutely. Um, and we, we already talked about Kennard eating because Batum's out, PG-13, right. Kawhi Leonard out for the foreseeable future. Uh, big Injury news, even though Anthony Davis right here, it says day to day. We saw that he's um, sprained his MCL. He's out for four weeks at least, yeah. at least, because uh, he had a similar injury last year. We missed more time. So Anthony Davis, that's just unfortunate, especially with the Lakers. Jeez. have had some tough luck this year. But you see everybody else that have been streaming heavy this year. Austin Reeves with his game winner. Um, Malik Monk's been a pickup. Uh, you got Dwight Howard out, Avery Bradley, Taylor Hunter, Horton Tucker. But, you know. Yeah, and this is opening up for Isaiah Tom. It's IT2, the pizza guy. He's back. The pizza guy is here. <laughs> and, um, He's delivering. He's going to deliver. <laughs> congratulations on that. <laughs> uh, the Grizzlies, uh, we talked about. Um, oh, tested positive for COVID as well, John Morant. So keep keep Tyus Jones. Right. Uh, keep the Anthony Melton for at least another couple weeks. Yes. Jeez. Holy moly. Uh, we talked about the heats, unfortunate look, uh, the bucks how, out heavy, Bobby Portis, somebody that I have, uh, that's hurting and you already don't have Brooke Lopez. So somebody to stream, uh, I know you had somebody on your list and that guy went off last night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got, we got Jordan, Jordan. Nuara. All right. He has been balling out since, since Giannis, uh, and Portis have been out. So I, pretty much can guarantee that he's available on your wire. If he's not, then you have some savvy co-league managers in your, or uh, you have some savvy league managers because he is available in over 95% of Yahoo. So jump on Noara, N-W-O-R-A. <laughs> and we see Anthony Edwards out uh, for COVID, which is unfortunate because he's balling out of control. Yep. Him and Kat seem to like be building some chemistry together and some winning yep. ways, which is a rarity though, over there in Minnesota. Uh, New Orleans, uh, you got Zion out for the foreseeable future. Kiara Lewis Jr. was playing a little well. He's torn his, torn his ACL. And then the Knicks sure. backcourt. Um, this is why Kimba Walker, beneficiary of uh, 29 points in a re- revenge game against Boston. No Rose, yeah. no Quickly, no Barrett, no Grimes, no competition in that backcourt. And mm-hmm. maybe this, uh, we'll see Kimba back in the lineup after this. Yeah. 
I mean, playing yeah. that way, I don't see how you, you can't like even give him a little bit more of an extended look here. The guy that started the NBA season off and, you know, a former um, multi-year all-star. And we see the COVID magic. Um, and we already talked about them heavily this pod. They play four games, and there's a lot of people to pick up there. Yeah. Um, some no some other teams. It's notable that they are staying healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. Utah Jazz, who were the first people to kind of catch whatever COVID when it first all happened, they are kind of yeah. steering safe, and they lost to the Wizards last night. But uh, you, you know, if you're a Donovan Mitchell owner, or if you're a Rudy Gobert owner, you're still happy there. But mm -hmm. we see there's cases going here in Sacramento, which we've talked about opening opportunities there. Yeah, for Meadow. Shout out Meadow. Uh, Raptors. Uh, Precious is out, uh, and uh, Chris Boucher is hooping. Mm -hmm. So if, if if Boucher has been slept on your league, he's definitely he's a must own today. And then Rui's out, so we've kind of covered all of these. Uh, we yep. left one big name in particular that we haven't talked about yet, and that is probably the biggest news of the week. Ooh. Kyrie Irving is back, and he was a top ten fantasy player this year. What's your thoughts about? Um, his probable comeback and, you know, only playing away games, it's just kind of kind of weird. And as a fantasy owner, kind of makes you cringe on both ends, whether you have well, it or not. Well, before the season, I wrote an article for Fantasy Pros warning all of you good people to stay away from Kyrie, especially given his insane fourth round price. All right. Turns out it was the right call to start the season. With Brooklyn losing bodies at a similar rate as the Pistons losing games, the Nets conceded and officially made Kyrie a part-time player, meaning he can play outside of New York. But not a day later, Kyrie entered the NBA protocols. So now he's back to having no value. All right. So you have to wonder if the Nets will still want him as a part-time player once they get all their guys back from COVID protocols. All right. It's definitely a wait and see approach. But even if Irving returns as a part-time player in a week or two, he's not playing every game and will most likely be a distraction to the team. All right, so add him at your own risk. But if you roster him, think about selling as soon as he's able or as soon as he's about to make his debut or as soon as he plays that first game and balls out. Absolutely, and I'm somebody that – uh fell for the trick now in ESPN he's sitting there uh in my reserve list so I'm hoping that come playoff time oh, yeah. some things change and he and he's playing but right now when I have six people out with COVID or injuries um I, I only got three of those spots it, it's actually right. finally hurting me in my ESPN league and now in Yahoo he's you you just can't own him because uh you can't put him into that IL spot it's just it's just does it's nonsensical, honestly. Uh, Another but, guy that I had to drop just because I have I have Giannis, and then I have been holding Ben Simmons. I had to drop Zion after that latest report that he got that injection in his foot, and it's just like it's looking increasingly unlikely that he's going to play this season. And so I I press that drop button so hard, like I just. I can't. Like you said, we only have a limited amount of IL spots. All right. So you can't just waste weeks hoping that Zion gets back because how many setbacks has he had? All right. And it has to be closer to five, five so far. It just seems like a lost season. And with the Pelicans at, you know, well above 500 or well below 500. Sorry. It just doesn't seem like Zion's going to be rushed back. Uh, so if you need those IL spots, and you know, and Zion just clogging up your roster spot. Drop him, please. Absolutely, and uh, somebody that we need to give flowers to. Um, this rookie is setting the league by storms. He's got Ooh. Detroit very excited, and I actually uh, used a couple drops because someone dropped him <laughs> in my league. I know it's, that's crazy, but I, I crazy. spent. I, I got rid of Devonte Graham and Dylan Brooks just to get an opportunity to get him. Hmm. Fortunately, I wasn't high enough on that waiver list, and uh, now I've lost out on those two players. <laughs> but that is Mr. Ooh. I call him Mr. He seems older than me. Mr. <laughs> Cade Cunningham uh, last week averaged 22.7 rebounds, 7 assists. Uh, 
Jacob, I want I want you to talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Cunningham. <laughs> he, he had him, <laughs> Mr. Cunningham, had himself a career night. All right, he had 21 points, seven boards, 11 assists, two steals, and a block. Over 50 fantasy points in points leagues. All right, he had a career high 11 dimes. First game with 20 points and 10 dimes. All right, the 20-year-old rookie has been slaying it. All right, slay bells slaying it as of late and is showing the world why he was the number one overall pick. Absolutely. And uh, he's a superstar. He's a budding superstar. He is here. Um, I think what's very, very impressive that I knew that he wasn't going to miss out was his, his defensive ability, his ability to switch, his ability to guard bigs. And you see he's producing on that defensive end. He's getting steals galore. And the last week, the average two, two steals, 1.3 blocks, Mm -hmm. uh, and he's clutch. He's got the clutch right. gene. Yes. Uh, you give the ball in his hands at the end of the game, and he's just calm, cool, collected. He's always had this since, you know, playing a Team USA with, you know, Mobley and and Green and all those. And Scotty Barnes, they all lean on him. Mount Vert, uh, he's just a polished pro. And with his oh, yeah. size, it's, you know, 6'8", 240. He's just – he's a man-child. And um, I know Detroit is grinning ear to ear. And I know Evan Mobley is taking the lead by storm. He's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But you can't go wrong uh, with drafting a guy like Cade Cunningham, number one overall. And uh, covering the draft, uh, we've seen guys uh, now, you know, getting getting some play time with these injuries. And I just wanted to shout out some of the guys that that got a little bit of burn this week. Uh, Kuminga, as we talked about, yeah. as uh, Jacob's big on. If uh, anybody goes down there, mm-hmm. uh, I think Cam Thomas is a straight stud. I, t- I told Jacob yesterday that with KD out now, you can really watch for him to be productive because um, they're going to look for somebody to score. Right. Uh, David Duke Jr. and uh, Kessler Edwards, uh, mm-hmm. those guys, not really scorers. They're going to produce on other things. <laughs> yeah. Pepperdine University, Providence, Pepperdine. like uh, Dayron Sharp, uh, North Carolina. Uh, we've talked about Herb. Shout out Bones. Josh yeah. Kripsfer had a nice uh, start the other night and he went for like 14, 16. Uh, right. Shangun is one of the best fantasy players per minute. Uh, he mm-hmm. just needs some of that opportunity. Shout out Luca Garza. A lot of people thought that he should have been undrafted, but he's been playing well. He's lost like 40 pounds, and you know, uh, wow. Luke Knight is a scoring machine when he gets opportunity. So, shout out some of these rookies. I know that was like a side note, uh, to- towards the end. And um, a Kongu had 10 points in his first game, somebody you might want to keep an eye out on. Solid. All right. Do you have any um, words of wisdom as we're, you know, kind of heading out here? Oh, man, man. I just want to say, man, keep watching O'Shea Brissett because that Indiana situation where they're going to ship out their vets, it is picking up steam. So O'Shea Brissett, keep him on your watch list because he is a per minute monster who could help you win your league uh, if Sabonis and or Turner gets shipped out. Uh, But other than that, guys. I mean, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter at Ain't Done Yet for fantasy basketball takes and streamers. And don't forget to check out the Jingle Hoops NBA commercial. All right. It'll put you right in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we, we're going to wish everybody happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And we yes. look forward to those Christmas Day games. So on our way out, we're going to hit a little plug talk. We are a proud member of Fantasy Points Media Platform. Please tune into the fan triple play fantasy podcast every week for our baseball, football, and basketball shows. Our triple play fantasy YouTube channel is also dropping content every day. This includes super fantasy bros with Jacob and Kevin between the scenes with Marty and Mac. They're just, just to name a few. They're really good by the way. Uh, check us out on Twitter and IG at triple play fantasy. Shout out doc, little cheesecake, brass Adonis, and everyone on the triple play fantasy team that keeps this engine rolling. Uh, please check out our two NBA interviews that we had in the last two weeks. Uh, again, shout out uh, Doc and Brad, but they interviewed Mike James, the 12 year mm. pro NBA champ, and, uh, you know, the Pelicans color commentator, Antonio Daniels, who also played himself 13 years in the NBA, oh, yeah. including winning the NBA championship as well. Uh, very, very good stuff. So please tune into those interviews. We don't just talk fantasy. We we talk to the players and we also talk lifestyle. So please hit the subscribe button, like. Uh, we're going to continue to grind and uh, love the game of basketball like you do and, and fill you in with some of these, these streamers that you may or may not have ever heard of. So 
Uh, <laughs> if you want to catch me on Twitter, I'm at jlewis0789. Again, my co-host, Jacob Dunn, at Ain't Done Yet. We'll see you here next week. Uh, Happy holidays.